Are you talking about the one that has like the, what is it, like six sixes? Or 12 sixes? Six sixes, so something like that. That was crazy. I didn't even count. It's a lot of sixes. It's a lot of sixes. But... Uh, maybe it was 12 sixes. I mean, I guess you could put 12 sixes. Or six sixes. No, six sixes doesn't seem like enough. Like 12 sixes seems like it would be better. I mean, it's a lot, but that I mean, if you're, if you're gonna make it, I mean, I, I can't stop right now because uh, you should look. Because now I'm curious. It was literally on right before I. Uh, we're talking about Bobby Gately's newest box. Some of you guys might have seen it. Uh, it has a bunch of sixes in it. Hey! How many they are? What's that? How many they are? 12 pack. Sure <laughs> Jeff, it's 12 pack. <laughs> 12 pack. I like it. Good evening from the UK. No doubt, right? 10. Was it 10? Really? I, I I don't know. I mean, it was a ton. Uh, they're all saying 10, so it was 10. God, I would love to hear that. Think about that, man. 10, six and a halfs underneath the back seat in a pickup truck. Yeah. Yep, 10, six and a halfs. How stupid is that? And I mean that in the best way of stupid, meaning that's just going to be so freaking insanely loud. <laughs> like, there you go. There yeah, it's it 10. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Yeah, so as you guys don't follow Bobby Gately, you definitely should because, like, those are the boxes. But, yeah, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Jesus, man. That is and so that's his, sexy. That's his woofers. Yeah, who cares? That's just so sexy. No, I mean, that's his woofers, man. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, how's everybody doing today? We hope you are doing wonderful. Uh, why you never do in, in, alternator install? Because I had a bad experience. Two things, I'm not a mechanic, for one. I, I'm not a mechanic. What happens underneath the hood of a car ain't my thing. I don't aspire to be a mechanic. I don't want to be a mechanic. I don't want to screw with any of that stuff. I've done them in the past. There again, I said, I'm not a mechanic. I don't want to do this. I'm old enough now. I don't have to do it if I don't want to. So, and there are plenty of places here that will do that for you. I have great friends that are mechanics that if you want an alternator, I can refer you to them. And then that can be their problem and not mine. Yeah. You know? So sometimes you, you have to just kind of move on. Polyfill or no polyfill? Hmm. That is the question. question of the day. Yeah. Uh, you know, one time we had Jeff on, we talked all about polyfill. <laughs> I don't, you know, I always put polyfill, when I was doing small seal boxes, I always put polyfill in. That was yeah. just my thing. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. it I, I thought it worked better. Um, there again, it's going to be one of those things I mean, people are going to argue about. No, I would put polyfill in my small boxes. When I was building small Seal? boxes, sealed? Yeah, I would put polyfill in. Uh, Dean, like, only thing in you touch under the hood is the battery. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, DSP or L LCDs? Um, DSP, I'm guessing you're asking. But yes, DSP. LCD7i is not a uh, DSP. But I would do a DSP for sure because DSPs allow you to do whatever you want. So today we're working on a Tundra. Yay! What are we doing in the Tundra, you might ask, right? Yeah. Uh, did you ever finish the Ground Zero install you were working on? No, we have not. It, is, it has not been touched. Uh, the latest video you saw was our up-to-date on it, and then once upon we got, a time. yeah, once upon a time, then we got back to work, and we have not been back to it. It's Fernando's wife's car, so... It will get done, and it'll probably get done before June if things go according to plan. So we'll get back to it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, from Glasgow. From where? Glasgow, South Africa in the house. Woo. Man, you guys are all getting ready for bed. Uh, so we have a Tundra that we're working on, and we're let me show you what we got going on. Uh, so going up in the dash is a set of the Virtus. So we're doing the, the 603 Virtus from Morel, so this is the speaker. If you'll notice, it's undermounted. So th what that basically means is, you, ever, you put it in from the top, no, we're putting it from the bottom because we need to move the speaker down. See how far that dome sticks up? By mounting it on the bottom and the hole is big enough, or we wallow out the hole that's big enough, this will go down in there, go into the, the location. Uh, they have already, they put, they put these in the dash, which is wonderful. Um, so they've already cut it all up. So we had to drill new holes for our mount. This is our factory mount here that we would have just gone into the two factory holes, but we had to move our mounts out and this will go into place. And then the grill will go over this, no problems. These are the tweeters. So you guys always ask like factory upgrades. These are not the factory tweeters. These are actually power base tweeters. So what we're taking out of this is the power base Toyota speaker. 
not because it's not good it's just he wants louder and bigger and more powerful so but this is the power base very nice very nice but not on the level of, of a Virtus from Morel. So we are gonna do the three-way set. This is the tweeter here. One of the things that's unique about this tweeter is if you'll notice these legs, they don't line up at all. They're all kind of weird. So we do three pieces of quarter inch acrylic that allow us to get, if you'll notice like this one here is sunk lower than these two outside. And then there's some foam in there, but this allows us to get a tweeter up into that location and then these are what bolt all three pieces of acrylic together. So there's three pieces that stack fab acrylic going on here. So three pieces of acrylic stacked on top of one another to get that. And of course, these are these are all M3 bolts that nut and bolts that we use to, to screw this all together. So that's the tweeter. We've already got the other tweeter in. And then these are the passive crossovers that are gonna go into it through a passive crossovers. He's getting an 8500 and he's getting the he, these are his, he brought these. He's got a Punch 1005. We're gonna make it a three channel instead of a five channel. So we're gonna, cause it's only 75 by four at four ohm. So we're gonna bridge one and two to the driver's door, three and four to the passenger door to give these some serious power. This is gonna run the power base that are in the rear doors down low. We're gonna attenuate them down low so that we can get our volume all the way up. So we don't have to worry about them clipping too soon. And then in the door, Fernando's already put in the mid base with the fast ring and the sound treatment. He, the customer had done or had done the sound treatment already. Uh, we're just adding in our brackets that we added the um, ultimate. This is the ultimate or the extreme? Uh, that's the ultimate. So this is Stinger ultimate that we added to our bracket to make it more rigid. And there's the Virtus in the door. And then the amplifier is gonna go here. I haven't got to that yet. What I've been doing is making the harnesses. So the factory amp plugs into this and there's a bolt for the factory amplifier that's right here. I pull all that wiring out. There's a clip that goes here. So you pull that and then that gets it all into the center console. Once you're in the center console, there's drill a hole here and there is a factory 10 millimeter location up underneath that. This is the factory ground that was going to the amplifier and all that. I, I like this, even though we're not keeping the factory factory amplifier, there's also this little tiny white wire that attaches to it. So I don't know what that goes to. I don't really feel like finding out. So we just ground it back in place using the factory ground point, but that gets all our wiring up into the center console now instead of up underneath the seat where we're gonna need more room. IData makes uh, a harness for this that just needs to be repinned. Um, so we've already, that's what I was doing here. I was repinning these in uh, for this. These two will run up to behind the radio. The red stripe are the tweeters. These are the mid base in the door. And then we're gonna be running wires up to these in the dash. Um, this is the wiring that we already have in place here for this one, that one's not in yet. But the tweeter and the mid-range are on the same line, so it's easier just to run a new wire up to this and then run it over here into the center console where our passive crossovers are gonna be hiding out, all tucked away and sexy. That way we don't have to shoehorn everything up underneath this because that amplifier is pretty big. So that's just gonna fit in there. And then for a subwoofer, I believe he has an, R, an R2 that he already had, a Rockford R2. Um, He's like, yeah, that'll work for me. I said, yeah, whatever. So that's what's going on in here. Also, of course, just like we took the JBL logos off the door because those aren't in here anymore, obviously, and we put the Morel logo on the door. So. So you talk about clipping. Talk about clipping? You talk about clipping. I thought you were talking about chips. All right. Clip, chip, chip clips. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do tonight? Um. Okay, so what's going on tonight? Fernando's trying to segue into that, kind of. Tonight on the Monday show, if you guys caught last week's Monday show over there on Facebook at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, we talked about how we're gonna change the show up a little bit. We're adding two new segments to it to make it a little bit more fun and exciting. One of those is gonna be a term where we take a something that we say or talk about often in car audio, and we're gonna do a deep dive into it. 
And then we're also going to, that's gonna be at the 20 minute mark. And at the 40 minute mark, we're gonna talk about a new product that just came out or do a product spotlight or talk about something that we're interested in here. Uh, so we that we're not gonna tell you because obviously that would kind of kill the surprise. But tonight on the show, we're gonna talk about uh, the term negative 5 dB, negative 10 dB of gain overlap and what that means to us in the 12 volt world, what it does, what it looks like, how it works. We've put together some cool little graphs as it were so that we can kind of explain to you in more detail what you're actually doing by setting something to 0 dB, negative 5 dB and negative 10 dB, um, good, bad or indifferent. We just want to show you what is actually happening so that you have a better understanding of it because we find that everyone just tells you to set something to negative 5 dB and you have no idea what is actually going on. So we're, we're going to show you and that ought to be fun. And then next week, even though we're starting the new show this week, next week we're actually going to have a guest. So the 8th, we're going to have a guest on Tommy Hu from... Uh, Sound Digital Ground Zero is driving in t from Michigan to Florida. So he's like, can I stop by and do a show? And I was like, of course. So we'll have them on. We'll talk about Ground Zero, Sound Digital, all that fun stuff, and, and just have a good time with that. So pretty excited to have that happening. But this week, we're going to just start the new format. And then next week, we'll have a guest, and then we'll get back to that new format. We'll come up with cool topics to talk about. Uh, I'm excited because it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of terms that we use and just throw them around and expect everyone to understand it. So it'll just be nice to, to dig into that. And then we can easily make a glossary of what everything is. So pretty happy about that. 2012 Kia Optima going KS all the way around. Dash speakers pop red, door speakers pop green. I am changing radio and adding amps. Any issue with wiring to pop green, green? The reason why they pop green and pop red is because the factory, the way the crossover network was set between the two, they did that to avoid any dip in uh, crossover point or performance. If you go green, green, that's fine. It just depends on what your speakers are. So if your speakers that you're using are wired through the passive crossover over in a way that they both pop green, golden, do that. If they're wired in a way that one pops red, one pops green, from the factory, then they're doing that because of the crossover and the overlap between the two and how they're set up to avoid signal loss. By the time they get to your head, they're back in polarity or phase as it was, uh, whichever one you feel like using to throw around in there and then just get yelled at because you used it in the wrong example. Um, but by the time it gets to your head, it should be the right direction, but they're doing that to avoid any signal uh, frequency loss, I should say between the two crossover points. That happens a lot of times. So for example, if you use a 12 dB crossover and they're at the same frequency, so if you have 12 dB, let's say you pick 3200 hertz, 12 dB Butterworth up and down, meaning that's the, the tweeters up, the mid range is down, you're gonna wire those tweeters 180 degree backwards. So you're gonna put negative, positive, positive, and that. you're gonna wire them backwards. Because if you don't, what happens is right at that crossover point, at that 3200, you're gonna get a negative 3 dB dip in frequency. So everything around that is gonna go down and up. That sucks. So if you flip it, then that doesn't happen. You negate that. You would never notice a difference. Like it's not bad, meaning the both tweeters are playing the same direction. So it's not like you're gonna get cancellation. What you're trying to do is just make sure you get the right frequency response to your ears and you hear all that glorious sound. So you're doing it for a reason. It's not like it's just oops. Ah, uh, hope Buzz Lightyear proves. Yeah, I know. So like the Buzz Lightyear story is actually kind of simple. So this, my my wife takes care of a, of a two-year-old, soon to be two-year-old, something like that. And he keeps breaking the legs off of Buzz. He broke this leg off and then he broke this leg off. And of course, I got a bitchin' set of tools as they say. And I was like, I'm not getting rid of this $5 Buzz Lightyear. I will fix his legs. Cause he's two, he doesn't care. He just wants to hold it. And he just sits there and does this. How annoying is that? So yeah, so we're fixing Buzz Lightyear today. What Morel six and a half speakers would you suggest for an active setup using audio control? Oh, small audio controls, um, ACMs. Um, if I'm gonna do ACMs, I'm probably gonna go three-way set. What, what is the three-way set I'm trying to think of? I always get that wrong. It's not, it's the... Maxima. Maxima. 
Max, Maximo's, right? Max, Maximo makes a three-way set. I'd pick up the Maximo three-way set. That would work wonderfully. That'd be perfect for that. Are you a TV repairman? No. No, that's all rocket science to me, man. Uh, what is your take on the Alpine Type S six and a halfs? There's a lot of six and a halfs out there for you to choose from. I would keep looking or go up to the R types. Spend a little bit more and get into the R type. Not a fan of the S types. I feel you can do much better. If an amp is rated 800 watts at two ohms and wire two subs to two ohms, each one, the amp has four speaker terminals. Is that okay because the amp started smoking after a while? No. No, God no, no, that's one ohm. If it's stable to two ohm, that's a complete final load. Just because it has two terminals, you need to go back and watch our thing on uh, how to bridge an amplifier, where we talk about all the ins and outs of the mono amplifier and how just because it has four terminals, if you take your voltmeter and go between the positives and the negatives, they have continuity because it's a bus bar inside the amplifier. It is not two sets of terminals. It's so that if you have two woofers both being four ohm when you screw them into the amplifier it will be a two ohm load at the amplifier because it is completing that last connection outside whereas if you just had a positive and a negative at the end of the amplifier and you had two subwoofers well then you have to do all that wiring externally the final load at the amplifier is going to be the combination of those two woofers not the fact that there's two terminals there it doesn't say times two it's a one ohm amplifier that means there's only one channel you blew it try to run at one ohm can't do that I bet you it sounded great until it blew up though maximal ultra three-way sound good in the ultima right i like them i like them a lot uh if you had to choose one for life would you pick tacos or donuts Ooh, fernando's gonna pick tacos that's not even a question i gotta think about that for a minute though because i really like donuts however i don't think i could survive off of donuts because donuts give me a headache uh, no, tacos and, and Coca-Cola. That's it. Yeah, I think I'd have to go tacos. I think I'd have to go tacos. I'd be sad, but I think I'd have to go tacos. Uh, ACM 4.300 bridge, 150 by 2. is too much for the Hertz DJA. Yeah. Yeah, that's way too much for some DJs. Using another ACM 4.300 to power the tweeters and the rear going active. Yeah, you don't want to bridge that. No, no, you'd want the two channels. You do the two 300 or the two. Yeah, the two 300. That's 100. That would be way better. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of power. DG, dude, DGs are super efficient. They don't need a ton of power at all. Like they don't need anything to get loud. You put that much power to them, you're not doing them a favor. You will probably destroy them. Um, if it's if it's a tweeter in a mid range, I would suggest just going active. That would sound wonderful too. Get a pass, you know. Get get a uh, you know DSP or something that allow you to go full active. Uh, take the passive crossovers out i don't know if those have inline crossovers or not i haven't done a set of dg's in a while but they're super sensitive man they don't need that kind of power you will be roasting those things if i'm losing memory and the touchscreen is resetting on its own every once in a while what can be the fix if you're okay so if you're losing memory that means that the constant 12 volts isn't there meaning whatever you hooked it to is going to sleep uh, the red wire is the constant 12 volts from the battery and the, I'm sorry, the yellow wire, the yellow wire, sorry, I was picking something off the floor, sidetracked so me. The yellow wire is the constant 12 volts from the battery. The red wire is the key that turns it on and off. If the yellow wire is going to sleep, meaning whatever's powering that isn't staying on, then that would cause the radio to reset every time. If you have them backwards, then that would do the same thing too, because they're both seeing 12 volts, the difference is, uh, this happens a lot of the time in German cars because the, the, the harnesses are wired backwards. The red and the yellow are switched. Sometimes you'll get one that has a yellow wire with a red stripe and a red wire with a yellow stripe, and that's telling you that you need to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, but that's that would be the only thing I could think of. Tacos, for sure. So do I wire them 8 ohm because each one of them is a dual 4 ohm? Yeah, you get 4 ohm at the amplifier. You got the wrong woofers. It's just what it comes down to. Yeah, you got the wrong woofers. They're, they're wrong for that amplifier. That's why they make all these things. Um, Viber 5 for your best play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Best play to buy. Oh, best place to buy in Tampa area. Honestly, I have no idea. When I buy my Vibrams, I just go to Vibram.com. I buy them directly from their website because there's like one place here in the mall that sells them, a countryside mall uh, here in 
I don't know, Tampa, but uh, Countryside Mall does have a place that sells them. They just don't have a really good selection. No one does. Um, so I just buy them direct. And when you buy them direct, they usually have sales. So I just wait till they're on sale. They're usually like they'll have half price sales a couple times a year and I'll just stock up. Uh, how much does the DSR one go for? I want to say, I believe it's like 270 ish, somewhere in that range. Plus, if you're going to go AR, you need the harness or something like that. Tacos, tacos, tacos for life. Audiophile quality speakers and amp for a 10 speaker Accord Touring. I watched the install, still not sure. Neither am I, man. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, a lot of those we do Morel in. It just comes down to you. There are so many good speakers out there. If you just got to pick one and run with it and know that you just trust your decision. I mean, there's so many good speakers out there. You know, if you're spending enough money, you're going to get something that's good. That's it. That's that's really all there is to it. It's, it's when you're trying to do it and it's like, I only want to spend like 400 bucks. Well, then that's that's what limits you right there. You only got to get $400 worth of quality. If you're like, I'm spending 800 bucks. That opens up a huge area in which to pick speakers from. And there's so many out there that are so good. It's hard to buy a bad one at that price point. Uh, tacos all day long. What would you suggest as a good mid-grade speaker upgrade in a new RAM powered by Audio Control 12.6? Ooh, okay, so we need a shallow 6x9 or a 6.5. Price point, 120 watts of power handling. What car? RAM. I mean, without knowing what kind of music you listen to, I'm thinking the, because uh, you got that much power, you can go with some real speaker. I would look at the Milli Legends. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not the Milli, the Milli Pros. My bad. Milli Pros would be really nice. The six and a half component set. Would you agree? 120 watts, Milli Pros, and a RAM, so that it fit in the door. Because you go six by nine, you, only, you don't have the room. So, like, you're not going to sit, you're not going to fit the Ultima or the Alt, the, you're not going to fit the morels. They're just not going to go. They're too big. You don't think the, the, the Virtus? Well, I was going to say the Virtus would work too, or the hybrids. But, I mean, the hybrids would be better, but I think that puts us way out of price point. So I'm thinking price point-wise that I would go with the... Uh, I would look at the Milli, Milli Pros just for price point. Price point performance. It's hard to beat those, man. Because yeah. they are reasonably priced for their for their but performance. They're not, they're, 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 the morels, they're not that much money. They're more, though. So, I mean, you could do a set of Virtus, no problem. Yeah. Like, that would sound good, too. It's just, I don't know what type of music he listens to. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that would That's be... That's what I... We'd need to know more. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Love Jeff show. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time and knowledge. Cars changed a lot since you installed back in the 90s. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, a new truck first, definitely. Uh, Kicker KS for the Ram for the win. <laughs> Bobby, you're funny. Yeah, no, not yet. Although the, the KS does have the six. I wonder if the six by nine. I don't think they're shipping yet. The six by nine, two and a half inch component set. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice too. Like that would be extremely reasonably priced and yeah. also work well. But I don't think they sell the KS mid base yet. I think it only comes as a tweeter. I don't think it comes with the uh, two and a half inch mid-range. If I was going to buy those, I would do the two and a half inch mid-range in yeah. the dash and that KS six by nine in the door. But I, you know, I don't think that package is out. You could buy the KS with the tweeter and then add the two and a half and just not use the tweeter. But yeah, uh, will the DSR one let you tune each? The DSR one has eight channels out. Eight channels of equalization for each channel. So. There's 30, 30 bands of EQ for all eight channels, so if that's what you're doing, you're perfect. Uh, you recommend PA, PA over coaxial for a loud woofer build. I just worry about the sub will overpower the coaxial. Uh, so I'm guessing you need component over coaxial. See, the thing is, is there's so many loud like coaxials and there's so many loud components for example one of the higher end there, there's a ton of entry-level loudspeakers there's a ton of them uh you, you name it you just look left look right there's so many entry level that sound great co uh loudspeakers out there if you want something that's loud though and you want to you want to build quality or whatever check out the the spl shows from hertz 
Um, I mean, Ground Zero makes. Two. Ground Zero does too. So there are companies more so than like PVR and and stuff like that. Not that there's anything wrong with those. A lot we PVR, sell we sell a ton of them. PRV. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It starts with a P. If there's an R in there somewhere in a V. Yes, that's right. And I'm not picking on them. I have no problem. You know, you have this. Uh, you have the Seleniums that are really nice too. Um, there's there's a lot of that stuff out there that would have no problem competing with yeah. tons of bass. However, if you're trying to keep the sound quality up that's gonna be a little bit harder. In that case, you need to go like super expensive components that handle a boatload of power and put out, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, yeah. that's where it gets fun. Um, what have you found in the best way to adhere amp boards to the back wall of trucks, assuming screwing through cab is not an option? Correct. Uh, we don't screw through the cab out to the back of the car, and we don't epoxy boards to the back of the bed either. I don't know what this looks like, but I kind of can sure I can get an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, so, well, that's that's neat. Okay. Anyways, disregard how the subwoofer's mounted. I mean, it works. That's what they came up with. This area right here in a truck, it's usually, it's either right here or it's right here. It is a tube frame, meaning that what is here is metal that does not go to the outside. It is where these are attached, okay? As well as the seat bolts, uh, the, the clips for when you're adding car seats, there's a inner structure that is located somewhere in this area on every single pickup truck. What we do is we build up to that and then we use nut certs, uh, the, the, the rivet nut certs that crimp into that and allow us to screw into each one of them. And then we can pull them out if we want. They look very factory, but that's where we attach our products to the rear deck. We will go up if we need to, because it's easy enough to bend a piece of plastic to bring it all the way down to the floor. Uh, if you see any one of our F-150s, they have something similar to this. We build this bracket that comes up like this. We put two nut certs in that hold it in place. But that's how you do that. There are certain people that will use some form of adhesive that just sticks to the back. I don't like doing that because I want to be able to get it out. And there again, I know nut certs look very nice and are very simple. Um, some people I have heard mention that they take a plastic panel and they take sound treatment and they will put a plastic panel areas where they want to attach and they'll put a big, you know, all the sound, if they're gonna sound treatment the back, they'll sound treatment in places for them to screw in with like either half inch or quarter inch uh, so that they can attach that way. I'm sure that would work too. So maybe try that if, if, if you're looking for something that's a little bit easier. Uh, can you do a full active with two sets of T2 components and a 2015 Altima and have six and a half and rear door also? Full active just means you're not using passive crossovers to do that. So as long as you have the channels in which to make this happen, of course, you can do anything you want. You just have to make sure you have the channels. So if you're going to go full active with two sets of T2 components, that's eight channels of amplification you have to have. If you're going to add two more six and a halves, then you're gonna need to, which you could do like that, or it, there again, you could do it with a four channel amp if you put all four six and a halfs on two of the channels and all four tweeters on the other two of the channels and you passively or actively cross them over, you're just not gonna have fader control or time alignment or anything like that. It's gonna make EQing them. Uh, you're gonna have to do like a generic EQ curve. You're not gonna be able to uh, EQ for like sound quality, I would say. You're just gonna EQ for sound, meaning make it sound as good as you can because obviously a speaker in the front door and a speaker in the back door are going to sound different when they get to your head. So you're just gonna EQ for the best that you can or just do a global EQ and just EQ everything and wherever it may fall, it falls, which is perfectly acceptable too, but yeah. DSR one powering three-way active in the front, front two and rear, bypass the sub, good. So here's the deal. When you're looking at a DSR one, they give you predetermined selections that you can do. If you download the software to your phone, Android or iPhone, you can walk through the setup that it has. If you're gonna do a three-way setup up front, you're only gonna get a sub output. There is no option in that to do a three-way setup front and rear. It's a two-way set up front, rear, sub, center, um, but there's nothing to do what you're describing. For that, you're gonna need to go with a bigger DSP that you can just set up um, on its own, like something like 10 channels or something like that. Uh, like a Bitnove would be a good one. 
you could do it with a Bitnovay because at nine channels of DSP, that's exactly what you're trying to do. That's why we carry the Bitnovay is to do what you're talking about. That's from Audison. Uh, and it has, you can do a three-way set, a, two, uh, a set of rears, and then a sub output. That's nine channels. Uh, my amp is one ohm stable. <sighs> two four ohm loads is gonna be two ohm. So you can do that too. Um, hey Nano, did you enjoy the short fight? Wife have fun? I did. Everybody have fun, yeah. There you go. 10 minutes to four hours to drive out there for a 10 minute fight. That's right. And a hundred and something dollars after. A <laughs> hundred something. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, hotel and all matter. that stuff. Oh, yeah. Ten Bye. minutes of fun, baby. Hey. It's anniversary night, so you had ten minutes of fun then, and you had five minutes of fun later. We have fun. Yeah. Uh, my dream amp growing up was a PPI Art Series. What was your your and Fernando's dream amp from the 1990s to 2000s? Did you have a dream amp? Dream amp. Was there every amp that you? I was gonna say. No. Yeah. No. Um, I still don't have one. Right. I mean, you, you well, the ones that you wanted, you have. You own now. So, like, you wanted a PDX V9, you have a PDX V9. Right. Um, I don't know what other amps you would want. I mean, you're spoiled I mean, at this you point always, in your life. You always want, like, the crazy ones, you know? Yeah. Uh, Tony. Tony amplifier is like, all right, that would be a dream amplifier, right? Which one? The big one, like Steve, or yeah, the middle yeah, one? the big one. Yeah, you want the big one. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about not like nonsense, you know. Yeah, nonsense. If you win the lottery, kind of nonsense. Exactly. You know the venti. Ooh, yeah. Amplifiers. Like. The Audisons, yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as for me, um, I I really, I got. I I would never run what what I so, this is what I always wanted. You know, like we sold these, we installed these. I wanted this amplifier here. Um, is, this, this was it. This is what I wanted. This is a heat sink, which to me is the most important part of this. What's inside of it really doesn't matter. It's not a nostalgic. Like, I, I would never run it, so it doesn't matter if it plays or not, but I always wanted a Ryan Beast. Uh, someone sent this to me for Christmas this year. I just finally got it all cleaned up. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. Um, so we polished, polished the whole amplifier, polished everything up cleaned it all up, got rid of all the nicks and little things on it, so as much of it as I could. So I'm getting ready to hang this guy up. Uh, I'm super excited, but this is what I wanted when I was younger and had no money. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, Nando needs a lift creeper to reach up underneath the trucks. Do you need a lift creeper? I saw them, that's pretty neat. Yeah? Yeah, because you guys. Oh, he's over here playing. Hold on. What? <laughs> All right, so it's like, hold on. You go like this. Shoot. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 Is that an MTX Blue Thunder 752 on the wall? Is that what it is? Yes. Is it a 752? It yeah, we had somebody donate that the other day. It's dead. All these amps on the wall over here that you guys kind of see, they're they're dead. They're, it's 1502. Just, it's a 1502? 1502. Yeah, it's bro. a 150.2. So that made the wall the other day. Someone was like, they brought it in, tested it, didn't work. They're going to like throw it away. We're like, yeah, no, we'll, we'll add it to the wall. So like these are all just dead pieces of history that, that we keep. Because there again, to me, I feel like the heat sink is the artwork. The internals, though, are pretty don't really care uh hey dean uh asked us before on facebook live and one, okay so definitely no benefit to running the, the morel maximus active off the kicker q class 1005 in the rear off the brick amp um actually no not really because they're it's that's a lot of power that you're not going to get out of it if you were going to up to the virtus makes total sense but maximus now nah, you're good 1005 power and everything if you're gonna yeah i would totally i have no problem doing that i mean we've done that we've done that maximus 1005 four channel mm -hmm. set of coaxials in the front i'm sorry set of 
coaxes in the rear, separates in the front, sub. We've done it with the Maximus probably two times, mm -hmm. at least two times. Um, and then of course we've done it where we have bridged it and just put it all power on the front. So we've done a lot in those that, that don't make it to videos, but yeah, that seems like that'd be, that wouldn't be anything I would bother to do. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, do you put the heat sink over some sound digital amps? I thought about that. I actually did. I thought about getting like a couple sound digital amplifiers, getting like the 800 ones, get like, get like an 800 one, a 402, uh, or a 400, you know, just get a bunch of the little guys that I know would fit up underneath there and just stack them full and then put that in the back of the car. Build, okay. you know, like laser some ends to it so that it all just kind of yeah. works out and or mounting it so that you don't even see the wire it just yeah. looks like an amplifier yeah. make the fan work again make a, a flush yeah you know, so it's just like yeah. sets on and like you don't see any wiring yeah. unless i flip the board over and you saw it all from the bottom yeah i thought about that and then i was like that seems like a lot of work and that i don't want to do it. yep i know because <laughs> actually what i was thinking about doing i, I thought about either doing acms mm -hmm. and or sound digitals yeah you, know, you just put like like I was trying to figure out how many ACM amplifiers I would want, you know, kind of like every now and then, every now and then we're bored. We talk about how many different ways we could use ACM amplifiers from audio control because they have the 302, the 304 and the 301 and they're all class D full range amplifiers. So you could actually use a 301 to power your mid bass in your door. So it's like, so we get, you get like three 300 ones for a sub and two mid bass in the door. You get a 402, a couple 402s um, to run like you know uh, your front rear mid-range the whole nine yards so it's like how many of them do I need uh, how many did you figure you wanted you wanted like six was Me? it six at one point yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I wanted six yeah one two but those are the silly things we do when we're bored yeah Hey, uh, that's a dream. Dream amplifier is right there uh, no thankfully we've kind of phased out the whole alarm portion of this because uh, we don't do enough of them to make it a, a cost benefit. Um, they just take time and, and effort, and so we've kind of just phased out the whole alarm portion. Uh, here we don't do remote starts like everywhere else because they don't really do much when it's 105 outside getting your car down to 100 really doesn't mean much. Um, I do alarms, but I hate them. Oh yeah, that's 100% sure. But no, honestly, I think last year, I don't know why I said honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. Basically. Honestly, basically. Technically. <laughs> Just adding a little Y to anything. Um, what did we do? Two alarms last year? If? No. One? 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 I think we did one in like January. That's it. Yeah. And it was a nightmare. One. And somebody came and they're like, you guys going to do it? Nope. 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 I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So. Sorry. At this moment, unrepresentative. Come on, Dean. Do, you, do it. But with the sound digital, it would be very cool. Oh, no. I'm not saying it wouldn't be cool as hell. Like it would totally be cool because that would take I mean, time. and right now we're trying to finish one build. Yeah, I was gonna say, but yeah, I mean, because where are they at? So if we look at, all right, so we look at this. This is the this is the 404. This is the 801. And if we grab this, I'm gonna try to do this. So. I mean, as you can see, we could definitely fit quite a few of these under here with no issue. That would be pretty cool. But the problem would be, so here's where the problem would lie. This says Orion, and those say Sound Digital. To get Sound Digital to, to, to let me borrow those, as it were, they wouldn't like this. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know how I could convince them to allow me to do that. No, um, at that point you just gotta buy. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to buy them. Have now I could always change this with the laser and do like we did on this, where we made our own covers for them. But I just, I don't. It, it would negate the the purpose. So I would, have, yeah, I don't know. And there again, audio control would be the same way. They'd be like, that's not really what I want to do. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, moving on. Next problem. Uh, Durango 2019 D61200 for the best sound Alpine X or Milli Pro 6x9 component set. Did they make a Milli Pro 6x9 component set? They don't make a Milli Pro. 
Then we got an R type six or an X type six by nine component set, which is very sweet. I didn't know why I didn't think about that earlier when someone was asking about that. Would you do Millie Pros or the X type six by nine components in a Dodge? Millie Pro or S type? X type. Oh, X. X type. That big X type tweeter. Yeah. Okay. Or a Millie Pro. I still go with the Millie Pros. If you, I feel the Millie Pros is going to be a little bit more. Like out of the box, I feel like the Millie Pro is gonna be a little bit more dynamic. Just a little bit more smack in the face with that tweeter. I feel the X-Type will get there. I mean, yes. Cause I mean, that X-Type tweeter is huge. I think that that X-Type tweeter is more the size of like the Legend, more so than the Pros. I don't know, I'm on the fence. Cause I really like that X-Type. I'm not, eh? But I'm an old guy, so. No, it's good. Yeah, where are you putting the connection point? Huh? Where are you putting the connection point? Oh, on the other side. I'm running. Oh, oh you're running the wire. I'm like, yes. what are you doing? Okay. Uh, oh, just curious. Love you guys. Oh, I love you too. Uh, I have a Toyota uh, Yago with four inch speakers in the dash, but I miss mid bass between the sub and the highs. Do you? Um, yes. Yeah, so that's going to be a tough one, obviously, because you have that little four inch in the dash. And finding a four inch that'll put out mid bass is tough. Um, when we have to do like those odd four inch, if we can get somebody to spend the money, then we go with the Morel hybrids. Uh, but there again, it's a four inch, so it never gets all that spectacular. It just does really good. And they're really expensive for a four inch, uh, yeah. but they're probably the best four inch that I've heard in a really long time. This is the way. <laughs> Uh, original Ryan, old school baby. Yeah, which DSP would you recommend? I don't really have a like go-to DSP. Like I don't. There's only one I don't like, which is the Dayton, which everyone knows. And I think someone answered that question the best this week when they were like, "What's wrong with the Dayton?" It's like it's an entry-level piece made with entry-level parts that is just made for a beginner, and it doesn't sound that good. And it's just, it's cheap. It's $150 DSP. What are you expecting? Right. Um, when you compare it to something that is much better, yeah. um, you know, DSPs that we use, we use audio control. We use the DSR One. Well, we use the Odyssey. Anything. Um, I personally, and we've used the Alpine, the PXE 0850S, now X. Yeah. Um, I bought a Tweak. You have Arc. There, Moscone, Gladen. There's, there's uh, Helix, for yeah. God's sakes. Um, there's, there's a ton. There's a ton to choose from. If you're, you know, uh, we do DSP Saturdays every now and then, which you can go look up. What, aren't we doing one this Saturday? Didn't we have to do a DSP this Saturday? Uh, that was a, that was the, um, the purpose of... Oh, we're going to do the, the H8 yeah. DSP from Helix. Yeah. All right, um, I got it. Hertz. Yeah. Did I say Helix? I'm sorry, I meant Hertz. Um, that's right, I forgot. We got to do that this Saturday. So we're going to have DSP Saturday. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, okay. How many charges do you have plugged into the strip on top of your toolbox? Oh, those are camera batteries. So, uh, it's a lot. Um, hold on. So these are all the camera batteries. So, I don't know, there's a bunch, and then there's some more over here. These are USB chargers. Um, but not all of them are active, like, as you'll notice, like, the little green lights aren't on. And so the only ones that are charging right now are these guys here. Um, so they're just doing their thing. It's 9 volts because we use rechargeable 9 volts for all our SMD stuff. Uh, but I have a ton of chargers. It's like right now we don't, we're not doing a ton of... Uh, we're not filming a ton of stuff, so it's just the cameras that we're using are plugged in. Um, plus, a lot of the cameras we've switched to just plugging into the wall. It makes things a little bit easier. Uh, Dean, what kicker amp is that on the back door, by the back door? Oh, that's a marine amp. Hold on. Oh, yeah. This one here. The uh, this, is an, this is an MX, this guy. This is an MX7005. It's an old marine amplifier. As you can see, uh, it's had better days. It it's, was in a boat. Someone took it out. Um, but you got an old bazooka. Somebody spray painted that one. I believe that's a power base. You got acoustic. There's a Rockford. Here's an old Trio. Uh, BD2000. Alpine. MTX. 750.1. 280GX. Uh, two, a, K, a, a 500 watt Kenwood, 
Soundstream Tarantula, a Crunch with a VU meter, a little Rockford, but they're all dead. They don't do anything. All right, guys, apparently the battery on my phone is going dead, so I'm gonna call that the day, get back to work. Thanks guys so much for hanging out with us. Make sure you tune in tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, where we start the new show. I mean, we've been doing the show for years. We start the new format. We're gonna have uh, topics to talk about as well as we're gonna take, uh, we've slated a half hour for Q&A. So there's still plenty of time for Q&A, if not more. So we'll see you guys tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time over there on the Facebooks. So and if you can't catch it live, just watch the rebroadcast tomorrow morning on YouTube. See you later. Say bye, Fernando. Bye, Fernando. Never gets old. We're starting in the wrong direction. There we go. That's the right direction. What are we doing? It's going live. What are you looking at? The ceiling? That's the ceiling. That's, that's what that is. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tuesday. What's going on here on Tuesday, uh, we talked about this is the Toyota Tundra. It's getting ready to roll out and getting ready to go show it to the customer. What we got going on, someone asked what will fit. And so to give you an idea, this is the Punch 1005 five channel. And it is as snug as it comes in this car. It goes all the way. It's not touching the seat rails, but it is really close. And over here, as you can see, it's it's equally as close. So that that's as tight as it gets fit up underneath there. Well, there's really no other room for it, but there's plenty of height. Like there's a there's a ton of height there, so there's lots of room for it to breathe, which is nice. This is what I've never understood. Why do they put the logo upside down? I mean, they got to assume that people are going to mount this flat somewhere, and and. Why, why, why Rockford? Explain this to me, why? Why would you do this? It doesn't make any sense. Um, even, okay, so if I go like this, I guess it's gonna be right, but I'm not gonna do that. Because Dan Pafaro was made to be mounted on the wall. So you can see the top. Okay, I mean, I'm I get mounted. it. I mean, that's the only, that's okay. the only reason I can come I'm up with. Floor so you can see it Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. So in the dash, we have the 4500 from Pioneer. Uh, he got a good deal on it from somebody, so that's what he went with. Of course, it's running some iData software. Who doesn't think that's the coolest thing in the world? I gotta tell you, iData is on point when it comes to this kind of thing. I mean, this is definitely the future. Making sure that you don't lose anything yep. in the dash is, in my mind, one of the most important things. So it does definitely make it easier to sell a new radio. I can't wait for Nissan. I know, I know, Nissan would be cool. Um, especially like controlling the cameras and stuff like that, which I know you can do, but just like through an MPO would be really neat. Uh, um. uh, MPO. <laughs> MPO. <laughs> so in the doors, the tweeter went in, the, this has got a set of Virtus three-way, so the yep. three-way went in, it's all up in there. If you wanna see what that looks like, definitely check out the uh, video yesterday. We added, we took off the JBL logo and added the Morel logo to it. So it looks nice and sexy. He's got a, he's got one of these bad boys. This is a camp truck, man. This is a camp truck. So he's gonna be driving. Ah, oh, Dean fell. Dean fell and he can't get up. What? <laughs> what happened? I fell. I fell off because these sheets are slick, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Dude, I slipped right off of that thing. That was thing. got a camera. No, I didn't. No, it was facing the other way. Damn, that would have been funny. All right, so we just wanted to come on and show you guys the end of this. I know, that was pretty good. It's gonna hurt for a minute. Uh, Morel's sounding super sexy in this. What we did is we took the 1005 and we turned it into a three channel. So, yeehaw, definitely. The three channel is, is one and two are on drivers, three and four are on passengers. Just use a voltmeter to set the maximum output. So we use the, I, we should record, we should have showed you that. I know, we were just kind of caught up in the moment. Um, who caught last night's show? Uh, because we started the new format last night and that got us into the new top topic. So we're doing one topic per show. 
Last night's topic was the gain overlap, the zero, negative five, negative 10. We talked about it, we had diagrams, showed you. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, make sure you go back and watch that. It was really informative. We're planning on removing it from it, put it as a standalone video at some point. But we also had some new speakers on there from Kenwood that they just came out with. So that was kind of cool. Uh, next week, next Monday, we won't be doing that. We'll be doing that from going forward. But next week we actually have a guest. So we'll have Tommy Spears, or as we call Tommy who, on from Sound Digital Ground Zero. I'm watching Fernando pull the truck out so that you know everything goes according to plan. That's why I'm not staring at you guys. But so yeah, we got a lot of fun coming up. And of course, tomorrow we get back to part three of whatever that was we started last week. I don't even remember what car it was to be honest with you, but that'll be edited tonight and out tomorrow. And that's it. There's lots of fun and excitement going on. YouTube video? I mean, we, we do a bunch of them. Hmm. All right, listen, I got to go show this customer his car. If we have time, we'll come back later today and show you what else we got going on. We just wanted to show you the final product on this. So this has been five minutes, actually, with Five Star. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? At the moment? Yes. Mm, just playing. All right, well, let's play with some new stuff. Play so. Playing. Turn around, the boxes. We got boxes of stuff. Got bo Don't rip the bags, by the way. Don't rip the bags. I agree. Okay. okay. So while we were away, we got some new products in that we're super excited about, and we thought we'd come on and share with you. We have some new Rockford amps, which we'll get to in a second, but this box is the, most, the one I'm most excited about. So Illusion Audio, is a product that is, it's a, it's a high-end product. I believe it's made in India, but it's distributed here by Orca, which is the same company that does Focal, Moscone, Gladen, uh, Dark Black Hole, Sun. Yep. Uh, anyways, we talk about these a ton, and I, I was like, you know what? We talk about these so much and how cool they are. I'm gonna pick up a set just so that we can show you guys. Okay, so this box, this is probably the most expensive version of these in the car audio. Probably not, but these are some of the most expensive version of what we're gonna show you in this box. But they're some of the best sounding of these in car audio. Let's take a look. So we got the instruction manual. Obviously it's a speaker. All right. We got some, uh, don't eat that stuff, guys. It's very bad for oh, you. Oh, it's not sugar? No, it's not sugar. Oh, I thought that was sugar. It's not sugar. You, I was gonna say, take the plastic off. It's like, all right. Will you stop moving? <laughs> God, man, it's like, it's like trying to find the whack-a-mole. So this is the Illusion three and a half inch coaxial. The As Illusion C3X, CX. So it has a tweeter here in the center. <laughs> And it is totally bi -ampable. You can see the cone is a carbon fiber style cone. We have a metal tweeter. This is it here. Giant terminals on the back side of it. One side is for the tweeter. One side is clearly for the mid-range. Don't remove the sticker. It will void your warranty. Rubber surround. Cast aluminum basket for the driver. Neo magnets. This has a this is a pretty big voice call for a three and a half. That's for sure. Over here we have the passive crossovers. Because there again, it is a it's a component, even though it's mounted on the same pole. We have your woofer, your tweeter inputs, your input for the mid base. So this is bi ampable if you would like it to be. So if you would like to run a four channel amplifier to this set and you don't have an amplifier that's capable of doing that, you can buy amp into these, which if you're like kind of fuzzy on the whole buy amp thing, in two weeks when we go back to normal Facebook, that's gonna be the topic we're gonna to talk about. We're gonna get all deep into buy amp and we'll have cool graphics like we did last night and we'll talk more about buy amp. Suffice to say, you can run a four channel amp just to this set of three and a halfs and run it through the passive crossovers if you like. And to do that, one of the things that makes uh, a that in K 
capable is having some tweeter attenuation, which on this, can you pop the top off for me? Mm -hmm. We have a tweeter attenuation circuit located on the inside here. So if you want it to be biampable, you flick this switch here. If you want it to be single, you just leave it the way it is. And then these are your tweeter attenuation. You have negative one, negative two, and negative three. I can't see through the phone. Um, yeah. So, oh, so you just, you, you move the jumpers. So zero? these, those lift up out of there. Mm -hmm. So you can do combinations. Yeah, you can so do. So you have zero, two. or you can do two and three to make five, or all of them to make six. So you have, it's, it's pretty impressive, because yeah. you can do anywhere between one, two, three, four, five, six dBs of attenuation just by moving these jumpers around. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Pretty but that's what makes this speaker special. I mean, even the passive crossover, as you can see, is a very well-built, very thought out, yeah. nice components, very clean and sexy. Clean, it's very clean. Um, but this guy here, this is the this is the three and a half we've often said, whoa, and I almost dropped it. Way to go, Dean. Um, this is the three and a half we've always talked about, like, wow. So to put this in retrospect of far as why, when Nick Wingate won, you know, the year when he had the best sounding truck, he had a set of these in his dash and a set of flax six inch mid bass in the door. That was it. That was his three way set. So for those of you who are like, oh, I really wish I could do a three-way set of really high-end components, but I don't want to build A-pillars. This is the guy here. Put this in the dash. You can do a three-way active set if you'd like. Super sexy. Very nice. So those, you know, we'll talk more about those as time goes on, but we finally got a set so that we can show and tell them. Uh, but yeah, badass is the easiest way to say that. Sugar. Definitely need the sugar, honey. Retail price? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it's it's one of those things if you got to ask. No, I'm just kidding. Now, Rockford. Rockford has decided to really step up their game and redo the whole Mini T Series line, and now it's called M5. So uh, Mini T's are now the M5 amplifiers. There's going to be three amplifiers in the line. You have the M5 1000 times one. You have the... They should have called them the five star. Ah. Definitely. You have the M5 1500 times five, and then what's missing is the M5 800 by four. That's gonna be coming later. So these are the evolution of the Mini T series amplifiers. You had the 1005, which we've used a bunch of times. You have the 750.1, which we've used a bunch of times. We finally got a thousand watt mini amplifier and a bigger five channel, which was my biggest complaint with the five channel was that it was kind of small. It's a thousand watts, yeah, sure, whatever. But it just, it it, it kind of left you wanting. Would you agree? Yeah, a little bit, but still. I mean, it was still an amplifier. awesome amplifier. Don't get me wrong, but in certain applications, it, it always felt like it came up a little bit short. So, I <laughs> get it. Anyways, so what we have now is the 1000. Let's pull this out of the box. While he's pulling it out, I'm going to show the burn-in sheet. So apparently, when they burn this guy in, they give you the, uh, the the big number there, which is 1685 of total. And then I'm thinking the more realistic power is the 1013. So that's pretty impressive for an amplifier that is very tiny, very tiny. Now, what makes these amplifiers super special is these are element ready amplifiers. That's that's this whole element ready thing. So unlike the, unlike the T-series amplifiers that were water resistant, yeah. as they said before, no, no, these are going to be a lot better. Um, what does it say? The preset switches, bypass and control panel settings and provide recommended, recommended settings to be used with Rockford Fosgate side-by-side -side stage kit audio settings. If you choose to manually tune your amplifier, tune the preset switches off, for more information. Yeah, they, they give you a preset for- The side-by-side -side side configuration. Side, yeah. so Which is what these were made for. You know, obviously we'll be using these in cars because they're small and they're compact, but the side-by-side -side guys and the mo were, were what these were made for. And if you team these up with the side-by-side, -side, you don't have to do any tuning. It comes pre-tuned for that. 
but these are, you can get these wet. So they don't have fan holes in the side of them. And that's why these wires are extended all the way out to here. So they could put a waterproof connector here on the side of the amplifier, mm -hmm. here on the side of the amplifier. On this end, what is this, your speakers? That's input, yeah. This is your signal input here. Mm -hmm. So they're still using the same connectors that were on the Mini-Ts. Yeah. So if you have an older Mini-T and you get it all wet, and you're like, oh, I wish I had a new Mini-T, it'll unplug and the new one will plug right in. On this end, same if you thing. can remove those for me, these come off. And you have your same power connector that was on your Mini-T before. This is your subwoofer output. This is your powered output. So they'll plug right into your existing T power amplifiers that you had in the past. Just now we have a much more powerful thousand watt. Pretty excited about that. Excited, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's let's move this aside for right now. Don't worry about putting it in the box. Just we'll set it right there, and let's take a closer look at the new big boy. And I think on this one we'll remove the uh, the plastic. We'll remove the paper off of it because I want to get into that panel there. Inside the box are all the same parts that you used well, to. Well, this is bigger. No, it's the same. Really? Yep. Because remember, this is supposed to take a four gauge that there's no four gauge in the world that's going to fit into that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think now we're going to have to whittle one down to fit into mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So, yeah, but no, this has always been the size. I mean, it looks a little bigger, but either way, this is supposed to be for a four gauge and the four gauge and the remote turn on are the same size. So. No, it definitely be Okay, well that might be good. I mean, hope it is, it's 1500 watts now, so you're definitely gonna need a four gauge for this. Just roll it over and remove the plastic. If you hear the printer kicking in the background uh, while he's getting that plastic off. No, I'm, I'm actually not that big. We're making this right now. Oh, it's almost done. I'm pretty excited. This is for uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew Palumbo over there at Audio Control. We needed, he needs a sign, so we're kicking that out for him. Let's grab the Allen keys. So here's the 1005, it's a little bit longer. They, they is it a little one? Did they give you an Allen key? Yeah, they give you an Allen key just in case uh -huh. you want. I didn't see but it in this one. I got mine. You got yours? Uh, no, it doesn't work. All right, use theirs. Ooh, it's done, all right. Hold on, why he's getting the right Allen key and taking that off. I am going to remove this. One of the things you have to do on the laser right away is if you're, when you're, when you're done cutting something, you need to remove it, any of these little circles like this out because they will heat up, they're hot right now and they will, they will stick back into place and that just makes dealing with it a pain in the butt. So that actually turned out really nice as, yeah, so, well, this will peel off and this will all be shiny black, which is kind of what I was going for. So it'll, it'll give you this, this nice gray, gray look, but then the black will pop. And for those of you that ever buy a, a uh, do anything with acrylic, the easiest way to get the paper off and not scratch the acrylic is to just use another piece of acrylic. There we go. So. This is what we're going for here. That's just a booger. And so we'll have, yeah, that looks cool. That's gonna be neat. And this is gonna go on to, where did you put it? Over here. So this is gonna go on to this, like that. So that'll be that. And then you have the two holes here that you can screw into place. So we didn't know where he'd wanna put it. So there you go. Awesome. That'll be. Neat. I see the illusion speakers. They're there, there. Yes, they're awesome. All right, so he's got the panel off. Do you see the preset switches? There's only one. All right, preset, preset on, on and off. off. So that's new. Mm -hmm. So this looks a lot like the 1005 did, but obviously now they've they've machined it down in a this little bit like, further. You don't lose the screws. Oh, did they did they do smart screws? Oh, so. about time. Is there foam on the back? I couldn't see. You were yeah, shaking the hell out of it. All right, so we got a foam gasket, and or is it a rubber one, gasket? Can, it's a rubber gasket. Rubber gasket. Yeah, um, you can see through, so I'm guessing when you set it up, you can still see Oh, the once light. you peel the sticker off? Yeah. Yeah, because you have your clean input, your clean output. So this has the distortion detectors built into it, just mm -hmm. like the previous model, your power on, 
Here's your clean out, clean out, clean out. This is gonna be your clean in. So as you're turning it on, and then we have preset on and off, preset on and off, preset on and off. High pass, low pass, high pass, low pass. Subwoofer on and off. I'm guessing this has to do with, yes, that's your input. So what's missing is input switches. So remember on the previous model, you could tell it whether you wanted to use everything off of input one or whether you wanted to use one and two and sub came from. So I'm guessing the sub can still turn on, but you're gonna have to run an input into one and two. Not sure yet, cause it's brand new. We haven't had a chance to play with it, yeah. but there used to be a switch on the side here that got us every time, which now is gone. Cause otherwise you could get it wet which they're not, is this no. totally sealed? Let me get yeah, it. Yeah, totally sealed. Yeah, so there's no more fans. Well, what happens if you remove this? Uh, you'll blow your warranty. No, oh, I bet you that comes off. Unscrew that. Let's unscrew it. I wanna see what it looks like. Probably need a different Allen key. Why? I don't know. Uh, I watched the game overnight show if if I only listen to new country music, should I use zero dB of, no, I would go definitely negative five. Definitely go negative five. Because the newer country music, there again, they, they still actually use instruments in a lot of that country music. So, ooh, you know, it'd be really cool if we pull this off and it was like a normal connector behind there. I'm not thinking it is, but God, that would be neat. I like the gold. That's just paper. Fernando. I don't think it's gonna come out. I don't think it either, but I, I still want to look. Still want to look. I mean, you know, you, you're silly enough to put an Allen key. Oh, oh! Oh, that is neat. Oh, it is! Uh, oh, yeah. damn! And there's the switch! Holy crap! So you don't even need that, do you? What, what do you mean? Oh, well, would be no, well yeah, well, I guess, because these aren't going to lock it. in. Yeah. These aren't going to lock in. Ah, oh, bummer. Ah, oh, I wish they would have thought of that. That would have been so cool, because then we wouldn't have to use these. Well, I mean, if they use this, it's because they want to make it no, waterproof. No, I get it, but it would have been nice if we didn't have to. Uh, which amps are we looking? I'm sorry, for those of you just tuning in, this is the new M5 Rockford Fosgate amplifiers. These are what are replacing the Mini Power Series amplifiers. So they've finally figured out that they need to make a waterproof amplifier. And what Fernando had just done is remove this new end pigtail that they have on the amplifier. Uh, they make, this is the 1500.5, so it is substantially bigger than its predecessor, the 1000.5. I don't know if the uh, illusion is beryllium. I haven't, we just, we just got it in, so we haven't had a chance to dig deep into it. I don't know. But so this is the 1000, this is the 1500.5, and then over there is the new 1000.1. What's missing is the 800.4 isn't shipping yet. Let's see the birth certificate on this guy. All right, so we have 1175 and 2177, holy God. All right, so there's that. But yeah, so we have a rubber gasket on these. I'm excited. I'm excited. Dude, this is nice. Yeah. I don't see how much that. All right. Oh, the gold on the illusion. Sorry. Yeah, I like the gold on the illusion too. Like 119. What's that? Hey Dean, I took your advice for installing the aftermarket head unit in the 2004 Nissan Pathfinder with the Bose system. It worked great and the speakers sound good and clear. Oh, that's what we like to hear. What gauge size wire for the interior speakers? 18 to 16 should be fine. I mean, that's, that's the norm uh, without knowing how much power you're running. But I mean, that's good for about 120 watts of power, 100, 120, 150 watts of power. Uh, so you should be fine with that. Um, what are we doing? Pull that off. Thank you, sir. Um, but you know, you can get, you can go down the wire rabbit hole for sure and get as crazy as you want. Uh, this is just the installation. Yeah. I yeah. Think you it doesn't. To go to the yeah, it doesn't tell us what those speakers are made out of. Let's find out. 
All right, so the printer, the laser is done. Let's shut that guy off for a minute and see what we got here. Let's wake the computer up. What type of signal to noise ratios on the Rockford Fosgate? Do they give you a signal to noise ratio on that text sheet that you have there? The Illusion Tweeter is a 14 millimeter anodized aluminum per their website. Thank you. Now I don't have to look that up. What's that? 20 to 20. No, not frequency response. Um, signal to noise. Yeah. 20 hertz. No, that's frequency response. Signal to noise, no is that's a signal no that's a sweep it just says pass um no they don't actually they just tell you they they, they test do it. but it gotta be in the website yeah it's gonna be on the website we're not dude come on we just got this stuff we're just opening and showing you cool new stuff so but thank you for finding out the information on the twitter 2018 sierra with bose system if i want to leave the amp and everything in there can i change the speakers i mean yeah you can um keep in mind though that those you, you know you're you're gonna be really limited on the sound getting much better. It might actually sound worse because if you don't get a speaker that can play the sound that those factory speakers are playing, which I know sounds really hard to believe, but yeah, sometimes by just swapping out a, a speaker with a premium sound system with a non-premium sound speaker, it sounds not good. Uh, we ran into that situation the other day when we were working on a Gladiator. Uh, it got booked without knowing that it has a premium audio system in it because the new gladiators don't actually come badged as alpine systems in some cases and the the speaker in the dash that we were going to replace wouldn't have sent we we actually tested the kenwoods in there because that's our go-to speaker in the non-amplified versions and it actually sounded worse putting that speaker in there than what the factory sounded like so we immediately put it back to factory and came up with a plan b which once that happens we'll be talking about but yeah so you got to be careful when just when you have a premium sound yeah hey dean what line output converter do you recommend for adding an aftermarket amp and sub i was looking at the lc2i and the nvx loc if you're just going to be doing an amp and sub, obviously the LC2i would be wonderful to use if your car has bass roll off. Uh, one that's a little bit easier to set is the LC2i Pro, which is this guy here. Let me flip that around, um, which is this one. This will help you deal with bass roll off, which is, you know, when you turn the volume up, your subwoofers don't get any, your bass doesn't get any louder because it's rolling off. So with this circuit here, you can attenuate for that, which we show you how in a video. Or if there's a heavy EQ in there, so for example, like if the the system doesn't have, like if it's an EQ'd system, which a lot of these cars are, and you have bass roll off and you have an attenuation in the subwoofer circuit because most cars do, then you could add uh, this guy, which is the key lock. Now what this guy does is a multitude of things. We have a couple of videos talking about this. First off, when you hook it up, it has an RTA built into it right here, so you can play pink noise, and it'll tell you, does the channel you're gonna hook it up to actually have low frequency that you can amplify? And if it'll tell you, it doesn't have mid, high, and low, each one of these will light up to tell you. So if you tap into, let's say, a factory subwoofer, the mid and the low would probably light up, but if you only, if the speaker you're tapping into only lights up high and mid, then that's telling you that there's no low frequency there for you to amplify. Now, once you've found that out, you go through a whole setup process. There's uh, some test tones you have to download. There's a little button here on the side of the amplifier. And what this will do is it'll go through and it'll de-EQ the system. So if there's bass roll off, if there's EQ attenuation, its job is to go in there and set that as flat as possible. So now that when you add that amplifier, you get the cleanest signal possible from your factory radio. So there's two really good options for you. Pick one and do that. We have a THD over here. You have a THD, total harmonic distortion? What do we got? One watt, 0.2%. 
Zero point two percent. There you go. Oh, uh, pardon me. One watt, four two one um zero one percent. How long to do sound deadening floor and trunk area twenty twenty Honda Civic hatch? How long will that take Nando do? Well, we'd have to pull the whole interior out of the car. Uh, just doing the rear deck typically takes what an hour and a half, two hours. Depends how I how I feel. Depends <laughs> on how you feel. So probably all day just to do that area alone with nothing else going on. What do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, if we because we, we we'd have to pull the whole car interior out, so that would suck. But yeah. Uh, how can I add Bluetooth to my factory monsoon radio on a 20, 2000 Camaro? Don't really want to change it. I like the factory look. Um, FM modulator. Just goes an FM modulator and that'll work. You can get the Bluetooth FM modulators and those will sound pretty good. They actually don't sound too bad anymore. Uh, no one pays attention to them. So I love the M5s. I know they're pretty sexy. Uh, Dean, what's the email for sending you news contacts for Friday's show? That is carstereotalk at yahoo.com. Carstereotalk at yahoo.com. What's up, fellas? Uh, do you know if there's a T harness for a 2009 Nissan Maxima with bows and navigation? Uh, off the top of my head, no. But check Metro, maybe. Well, the the D and I one might work. This guy might work. Um, I would just go look at the harness and see what it looks like, see if it matches. Otherwise, you know, check Metro. Fro's in the house. What's up, Fro? and see if the plug looks like your factory harness. You might have to pull the radio out and see what the factory harness looks like first. Tempe, Arizona. Yes, that is definitely where they're at, Tempe, Arizona. Good times. Good times. Well, that's it. You excited? Yeah. I'm excited too. All right. Well, hey, thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you guys found somewhat fun and exciting playing with the new. One of the fun okay, one funny thing. Fran has asked me not to talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about it. So if <sighs> let it go. I am letting it go. I just think it's funny. <laughs> so as I said, this is the most hated aspect ratio in the world. And apparently somebody that watched the Monday rebroadcast of all of these that you know was like just totally got all pissy like oh my gosh, like this is so terrible. If you're not gonna do it right, don't do it at all. I'm like, what? Like it literally tells you it's the Instagram recap show. I mean, how how like annoying can you be? Uh, work on anything cool today? Did we work on anything cool? Uh, we finished up the Toyota that. Tundra, which was the video before this, and then after that, no, it was just a couple little pieces that we had to do. Nothing, nothing too spectacular. And then something, uh, something big accidentally got booked that wasn't supposed to, so that got rescheduled for another day. So that kind of sucked. Uh, what's in the bay right now? Nothing, but we got a we got a job coming in tomorrow, which he's already told me about, and I've already forgotten. Well, that's a good thing. Oh no, it was the F one fifty. Oh, that's a new car. dude. A Tundra oh. and then an F one fifty. The only thing we need this weekend is a Jeep, and we'll be all set. We'll hit the trifecta. We'll hit our quota for the week. Please. Howdy from Australia. I'm fixing oh copper phone lines. Oh my gosh, really? Uh, tech tip of the day. Ooh, all right. So we need a tech tip of the day. Uh, just when you're in the car, be careful you, so you don't fall inside the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you didn't catch me slipping and falling in the, uh, the Toyota earlier today, that was pretty funny. Um, no, seriously, tech tip, let me think. Gosh, you know, uh, the, the problem is we take a lot of this stuff for granted. Boom, shh. It's just a rock. Um... <laughs> Man, thanks, Bobby. You really kind of stymied me there. I, we didn't really do anything today that was uh, pretty... It's, okay, so tech tip of the day. All right, let's take a look. We got a digital multimeter right here. All right, so this is, this is set up. A lot of people get confused about how much voltage is coming out of their amplifier, and they don't know how to read it. When we were setting up the amplifier today, we were setting up channel one and two to power the left and three and four to power the right. To s but we have to make sure that the same amount of voltage is coming out of the left that is coming out of the right. To do that, th the amplifier had the distortion detector on it. So we went ahead and we set it up and got our distortion detection all set up on 
the first group of channels. After we did that, we took our digital multimeter, we set it to AC, which is the volt with the squiggly line above it, not the dash. This is DC, we want AC, sound is AC. You then take a reading. In that case, it was like 36 volts, something around that. Was it like 36 volts or 34 volts? Either way, 34 to 36 volts. And if you have a short-term memory like me, you write it down. Then you go over, take your positive and negative leads, go over into your next set of leads, and you start turning up the gain until it matches the same output voltage. You also have to make sure, because remember, the amplifiers aren't perfect, meaning they're not going to be 100% right. So you have to make sure that your input or output light doesn't come on. It, it stays within that blue range. If it does come on, then what you're going to want to do is turn that down until that one is perfect. Then you'll go back to the other side and turn that one down so that they both match the same amount of output voltage. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your EQ is off, that if you have any time alignment in place, you've turned that off, that the balance and fader is set to the center uh, as far as left and right goes. In this case, we've had it faded all the way to the front and that your crossover is also off and your speakers are disconnected. Never do it with the speakers connected. And that'll be that. There's your tech tip for the day, Bobby. Uh, you should do an instructional YouTube video showing, teaching the proper way to solder wires together. Are you kidding me? Dude, do you know how many like solder Nazis there are on like, and, and I mean that in no disrespect to anyone that's a Nazi or anything like that, or, you know, went through that whole thing. Do you know how many crazy solder people there are out there? Like, oh my gosh, you're not doing that right. I mean, come on, man. We're just trying to get two wires together. It's, it's not this difficult, but yeah. Uh, digital multimeter is super friend. It is a super friend. It makes your life so much better. Yeah. Uh, a multimeter is your friend. Everyone's got a friend. We all. I'm gonna take mine home tonight and cuddle it. Uh, there's an eight-inch kicker sub, but you have a cut the deck for the hundred core. I, I would never put a, a sub. I, the last thing I want to do is put a sub in the rear deck of anybody's car, unless I'm um, building a rear deck for a sub, which I haven't done in years. Uh, it, 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 no, the the amount of no, just put a down firing 10 in the trunk or down firing 12 in the trunk and you'll have like 100 times more bass um, and it'll sound good f-150 yesterday jeep tomorrow life yeah thanks for the awesome videos you bet flynn and thanks for your awesome videos too if you guys don't follow flynn audio on instagram here you should because they do talk about alarms that i don't because they're in a place that's cold and we're not uh, my radio has only two volt pre-out would you recommend using a line driver or something like a line output converter such as an LC7i? <gasps> oh my gosh, you asked a wonderful question. Thank you so much. No, you don't want to use an LC7i. An LC7i is a high level to low level converter. It is not a line driver. It does have a line driver functionality built into it, but not in what you're thinking. It is designed to take a ton of voltage up to 40, 40 volts into it and then put that out as a 5 volt output up to 8 volts or 9 volts, whatever you want. More than likely 5 volts. That's what it's designed to do. In your case, you have a 2 volt output. So if you hook that up to it, you get no sound whatsoever on the other side of it. What you want is the audio control matrix. Oh yeah, the audio control matrix is designed to fix your problem. That is an actual line driver. So let's head over here to audio control. There we go. Why I don't have these just set up as fast keys, I will never know. But hey, I like to type. Uh, line drivers. And the nice thing is, is the matrix is now the matrix plus. They just got done rebuilding this whole thing. So it's new, it's small, it's sexy. And there it is. Ooh, the matrix plus. That's right. Take the red pill or the blue pill, whichever one you like, and that will get you. So yes, by adding this to your system, this will make your system sound a lot better. And that is the one time I will say use a line driver. But yeah, pick one of these up. And you'll be all set. Let's go down here. Oh, and it's 199. Now I know what you might be thinking. 199. Okay. Well, how much is it going to cost to buy a deck that has a five volt output? All of a sudden, that 199 looks pretty good. So, there again. 
Uh, you do it so fast, you're a pro at soldering. Well, I solder every day. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's you're, you're just having a really good time with that. Well, yeah. I know. But no, I mean, it's like we solder every day. So, yes, we know how to use a soldering gun. Kicker on Max tonight, is it? Oh, I'll be on. I'm going to be on that in a couple weeks. We're going to talk no, about tools. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I forgot. Uh, is it the 16th? Might be the 16th. I have to check. I think we're going to give away some polarity checkers, testers, too, that I have. You um, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I got to come on and give away my stuff, but whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Bill's like, can we give away some polarity testers? I was like, yeah, let me see if I can find them. Because we bought a bunch of them to go to Knowledge Fest. We were going to yeah. give them away as, as prizes, and then Knowledge Fest never happened. We bought a bunch of stuff from Knowledge Fest that, you know, didn't happen, so kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, whatever. Um, what size cap do you use for active tweeter? If I'm using an active tweeter, I'm not using a cap. I just run them commando style. Boy, you have it's, DSP, it's, you know? That's what the DSP is for. A cap is really, if you set it up right, you don't need a cap. So I don't, I don't ever use a cap if I'm using a DSP. Ah, uh, kicker fanboy. Yes, you are, Bobby. Uh, it was just the tech tip of the day. Yep. Uh, what's better for the front of big three-quarter ton? Adding front parking sensors or a front camera or both? I mean, my thing is my eyes typically don't lie to me. So if I can see it, then chances are good it's there. I, I don't know what sensors in the front will do if you can see what you're doing. So I would go for a camera personally. Plus, the camera doesn't look as bad as those stupid sensors do. Caps to protect an active tweeter? I know, right? <laughs> I will take some. Uh, you guys are awesome. Okay. I want a polarity tester from you guys about two years ago. Ah, I found them, by the way. I was, <laughs> I, I didn't know where I put them. Well, because, you know, with Christmas and everything, we move stuff around, and I didn't have any idea where I put that stuff. Right. So I had to find the stickers, and I had to find the polarity testers. Yeah. But I found them last night. So I was pretty excited about that because I didn't know if they were gone for good. That is awesome. It is awesome. Little things like that just tend to make, make the day happy. just, ah, oh, it's so good. So good. Good times for everyone to be had. But all right, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed us uh, playing with those new amplifiers. Uh, the talented, okay, so if you won anything in the last two months other than the 12 days of Christmas, it got shipped yesterday. So I got... <laughs> Everything that people have been waiting for just went out Monday. So, like, the calendars, the CDs, the, the, everything. So, every, everything is gone and on its way. All right. So, I'm pretty done. excited. Asking for a friend. It's okay. Hi, gents. I hope you all had a good stay. Get back. Okay. Well, see, I tell people I'm going to leave, and then it's like they ask me questions. Uh, hope good. Are the Kenwoods back up cameras versus old, other brands looking to add one to the DDX decks? Thank you. I mean, they're, they're good cameras. They're damn good cameras. I like to use cameras that work in the situations. If they work in the situation, great. But I don't just buy the camera to buy the camera. I look at the car and I figure out what is going to work best to put a camera in the center of the car. If the Kenwood can do that, then we'll use it. If the Kenwood can't do that, then we don't use it. That's really what it comes down to. Um, all right. We're going to call it a day there, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, 5 Minutes of 5 Star. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Watch. I'm um, going to go out. Oh, you're going to marry Poppins at? <laughs> yeah, would be, that would have been good. I'd be like, wow. All right. That's, that's, yeah, you're not getting anywhere with that. Uh, yeah. Yep. So you just made it worse. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Wow. Just stick it in. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry. I got I got sidetracked there. Wow. I was just staring off into the abyss, trying to remember what day of the week it was. But I know what you're thinking. It's an F-150. It is. It's but this is a blue one. This is a blue. That's right. <laughs> this is a blue F-150. 
Actually, all right, so did we put the flashlights all back yet? Oh, there's one. Hold on. No. So this F-150 got something really special put in it today, and we're super excited. There it is. This is a special F-150. This is a special F-150. This is the first F-150 that we've done with the new LC51300 in it. So we have we have that guy in there. Let's put this down there. That might look better. No? All right, either way. So, yeah. We got a 51300 in here. Uh, we added this box that we put in the other day into the other F-150. These are the, the shallower scars. I don't, I don't know. No, they're not shallow. Well, no, they're not as deep as the last ones. This is the step down. The last scars we put in were, were thick, were the next, were deeper, meaning they were they were bigger, had bigger surrounds, bigger magnet. Really? Yeah, no, yeah. No, they weren't these. This was, this is, yep. No, because remember I had to put half inch spacers on those. So they didn't hit the grills. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna hear. You want this? I don't remember. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, uh, so that's what we did today. He already has the the Focal plug and play Ford F-150 speakers in here, so that's kind of cool. Um, for those of you that don't know, they come with their cool branding, so we didn't have to make anything because we didn't put them in anyways. He put them in. That was nice. So that was cool. We added sound treatment and all that. Yeah, he did his sound treatment, did all that. This is we added in the audio control Ford bass knob. And then we integrated into the factory. Now this is gonna be the sacrilege part of it, because I know some of you guys are gonna you did what? So to integrate into this, we use the AR technology. So we use the DFO2 harness connected to a DSR1, which allowed us to reflash the radio, go with DSP that way, plus the LC. Uh, 51300 the D isn't available yet we would have been able to use that but it's not out yet so this made it this was the next best thing and that's what we got why are you guys still working so late today it's not it's only 520 we still got an hour and 10 minutes of fun and excitement going on um, but yeah so that's that's what we did in this it sounds great um, dude it's a lot of power it's way more power than these speakers need that is for sure this thing has got power for days. We were super excited to try it because it was like, man, I you know can't wait to see. It's so much, it's so much. Uh, now it does have zero gauge inputs on it, just like all the other amplifiers in the audio control form factor that is. But, <laughs> you're funny, Jeff. Um, you only need to run a four gauge for this one. So Fernando made a new fuse holder mount for just a single four gauge so yeah he, he, i don't know why he's like zero gauge mounts over here apparently four gauge is going to mount over here um so here's his fuse holder everything isn't done and then if you guys are like why is that wire yellowish uh because this is the marine stinger wire that runs in tandem uh so we only have so as you can see here it's all one piece so it's kind of nice but yeah that's all zip tied up into place and there is that so Yay, ground comes over to here, power goes there, Bob's your uncle. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, having non amps 21 coming next week, what suggestions you have for amp integration? If it is the, so if it uses the same harness, it depends on the dash. So if it has that new 21 dash, I got nothing. I got nothing yet as far as what it can do. You may want to call um, iData and see if they know anything, like if, if you can do anything with it. I get it, it's the F-150. Um, but like, I, we don't know yet. You know, we're still, everyone's still buying 2020s and stuff, so. Tech tip of the day. Okay, Bobby, give me some time to think about it. Um, we got a new tool, maybe we'll talk about that. I'm getting jealous that audio control amplifier. I know, right? 21 dash. Ooh, yeah. I don't. I don't know yet. We uh, we have a 2021 coming in here in the next couple weeks, but it's gonna be the 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 BO system. So I I haven't. We haven't had a chance, and I honestly haven't had too many people talking about it either. So as far as like in the forums and fun stuff like that. Um. Yeah. All right. Do you guys like tamales? <laughs> Chicken, chicken tamales. Yeah, we get them all the time. Yeah, Fernando stops at one of the little bodegas and picks up some 
uh, chili and cheese and chicken tamales. Rice. Um, Rice. Remember that was the last one? With the green? Yeah. Yeah. They were good. Yeah, they were good. Um, Fresh Market over here, we have a place called Fresh Market. They sell tamales too, they're pretty good. You know, for the uh, pre-packaged uh, kind, not made by, uh, you know. All right, so tech tip. Maria. Yeah, yeah. So tech <laughs> tip of the day. Every now and then you run into a situation where you need to test the output of either a radio, a factory radio, aftermarket radio, something like that where it, you're but we're talking about the preamp section so you need an amplifier but it's like oh i don't have an amplifier in the car yet or i don't necessarily need to to have an amplifier yet well we've come up with a solution for this problem and there again there's there's multiple ways to do this and we're going to talk about those here in the tech tip of the day so we were talking about this same problem with Matthew Palumbo over there at Audio Control because we had a situation where it was like, it'd be really cool if we had some form of an amplified speaker. Because what we've been doing in the past is we would take this right here, the Dork amplifier, which is a 12 volts, plugs into a cigarette lighter, uh, and we can hook a speaker up to this and you can plug an RCA into it via the aux jack. The problem is, is that it's, it's like a whole bunch of pieces and you got wires going over and it's, ah, it drives me crazy. So you're talking to him and he goes, you know, we used to have this, this piece here. And I was like, Let's explain it. So it has microphone inputs, which no need for that, but it has these RCA inputs. So what that will allow us to do is take a signal from some form of a preamp factory, aftermarket, whatever, put it into this, we have level control, we have a little bit of EQ, but now we have, and it plugs into the wall, uh, but now we have one functioning speaker in the car out of that. So if, let's say we wanted to know like polarity over the RCAs, we could plug uh, an RCA into this, plug it into the factory amplifier, pop it here and boom, we got that. If we wanted to hear if like chimes were coming out of a preamp section, we could plug this in here if the amplifier is dead, the factory amp. So there's an amplified speaker in the install bay is a wonderful thing to have. Now we got this because it's rugged as hell. And you know, if it drops or whatever, we're not gonna have to worry about it. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Plus it's, you know, it was neat and it has a bunch of things. And also uh, if we want to do karaoke night, we can plug one of our Shure microphones into there and we have karaoke night. We're rocking in the install bay, right, Fernando? That is correct. He's super excited to try that. However, what you really just need is some form of an amplified speaker. So for example, we could have easily done it with this. This is the kicker bullfrog. And over here on the side of the bullfrog, it has an auxiliary input, stereo auxiliary input. So eighth inch to RCAs. And we could have done the same exact thing with this. Now, most of you guys at home probably have some form of a small amplified Bluetooth speaker that has an auxiliary input. It's a wonderful tool to have in the install bay just in case you need to test the output of an amplifier. So in this, for example, when you flash the radio with the DSR-1 and you want to make sure that the variable voltage is working and you got it right. For us, it's simple. I plug an RTA in and I look at the signal go up and down. Well, if you don't have an RTA, how are you gonna do that? Simple enough. You could take that RCA out of the DMRTA, plug it into here, or plug it into an aux jack, into your portable Bluetooth speaker, or your portable you know, speaker that has an aux input, switch it over to aux, put this on radio, turn the volume up, turn the volume down, and make sure you have sound that's coming out of the DSR-1 now into in, or out to that speaker and thus it will now go out to the rest of the car so it allows you to do some for testing meaning do the testing before it's too late i'm a big advocate of doing as much testing as humanly possible before i get to this point where the amplifier is in and done because at that point it sucks like it's no fun to test when you're here so i always pre-test everything to make sure it's going to be right right fernando Right. Exactly. You can see the excitement. So there's your tech tip for the day. Uh, have you worked on any 2021 Tahoe bourbons yet? Uh, no? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. Not 2021s. Uh, have you done any Teslas? No. I, it, there again, it's one of those weird cars uh, we just don't get. I have a friend that bought one, though. Uh, 
did you say, did, did you say tools? Show us. I mean, we have lots of tools, but if you want to know what tools we use all of, uh, you know, if you, we, DNF tool drawer, go there. DNF tool drawer is a place you can go to find all the cool tools. Speaking of tools, um, Fernando, your tool. No. Yeah. Uh, on March 16th, March 16th, if you got, if any of you guys are watching the Kicker on Mask series of shows that they got going on uh, with Kip, apparently I'm going to be on the 16th and we're going to talk about tools in the install bay. So that ought to be pretty fun there. Uh, instead of the Alpine PXE, can what can I get as a downgrade for a 2018 Accord? I saw your video. You need something with six channels of RCA imp or six channels of input, and two of them have to be discrete in the sense that they have to be solo. So, for example, you need something that has, let's say, uh, one and two input, three and four input, and then five is its own and six is its own because you need to be able to put the center channel in on one channel and the subwoofer in on the other. Now, obviously, if you're not so concerned about the Bluetooth, meaning the echo and the Bluetooth, we know one day Metro will fix that. But until they do, you still can use their piece. You're just going to get an echo on the Bluetooth. But as far as sound quality goes, it's almost worth it. I'll tell you right now, it's almost worth it to get, their, to get the T-Harness and the DSP from Metro because it sounds that good. It really does. So, um, uh, honestly, at this point, what we're telling people is deal with the echo, man, because you're not going to get the sound otherwise. Yeah, just put the um, speaker on your Yeah, just put the speaker on your phone. Uh, I have an Ampro GM61 to run my LC 4.800. Should I be updating the firmware on periodically? I have some funky stuff going on lately. If there is up on the bottom of the else on the bottom of the Ampro GM61 is a sticker and it will have the current firmware that is on that. If it is different than what is online, then yes, you should totally update it. Sorry about that. Uh, 2019 Civic non-premium audio. I also have a Civic 2020 premium and can't find that harness, but for the Civic 2019 non-premium, do I need... A DEQ, or can I just from the head unit into my DM608? Uh, you can just go from the DM6, you can just come out of the head unit into the DM608. DM608 has an auto EQ feature that will do the de equalization. Then, on top of that, you can add your equalization to it. So, you're good there on the non premium system. Uh, but the harness is going to be hard to find because Access has more or less discontinued it and the fact that they're only going to be selling it with their dsp now which sucks but check because they do make the 70 and the 71 harness for that car which is the exact same thing you might need to buy two of the 70 harnesses just to complete out the pin configuration but you're all set there <laughs> desert tamales yum <laughs> you need help all right hold on let's see what we got here what harness would you recommend for 2004 Suburban to keep bows and steering wheel controls? Um, iData, simple enough. Don't ask, don't ask any employees here to participate in karaoke. Oh, come on, man. I know every employee out there at Audio Control participate in karaoke. They grab guitars off the walls and keyboards and maracas and they'd all be singing out there in the rain. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Fernando getting the right angles, always. <laughs> <laughs> um, what could you just, uh, why couldn't you just mount that tiny amp and a three inch speaker into a PVC six point? You could, you could totally do that. You could totally do that. What you need is just something. Um, I didn't want to do that because I, I really don't like the sound that comes out of that dork amplifier. Uh, it, it gets hot, prematurely hot too. So it almost like it doesn't like the four ohm loads that we were putting on it. So, there again, if there's a tool that I can use that's better built, I'm gonna buy it because yeah. I want a better. I want the best mouse trap I can better find. Uh, what's the best door speakers for 2013-14 Ford F-150? That's kind of an, a, a wide question because there's it's you. What's the best speaker for you? Um, there's a lot to choose from. You know, how much money do you want to spend? What kind of sound do you like? There's there's just so many things to choose from. Jason's in the house. What's up, Jason? Can I get that cheaper than the Honda? Uh, no idea. Uh, what's up? Um, 
Oh yeah, it is. The, yeah, the the access piece is cheaper than the than the um. That ground zero Alpine. foam mat for doors looks. Oh, here we go. That ground zero foam mat for doors looks pretty cool. It is. It is cool. It is cool. Uh, what's a good loudspeaker but still sound quality speaker? None. None at all. They're two totally different things. It's not what they're they're made to do. I mean. Rockford was pretty close to that. Um, you know, you have Hertz uh, in the SPL show stuff, but yeah. there again, I, I wouldn't confuse the two as sound quality. It's not really the speaker too that's the problem. It's just how you're playing it. If you EQ it, they all sound pretty good. Uh, the Door Kit Pro from... <laughs> nice lies. Uh, all right. What? Uh, Fernando, music request. Listen to all uh, the embrace when the bass hits. Ooh, when the bass hits. you want You want to? You want to do that fast? No. Get, your, get your phone out of your pocket. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I take a cool. picture of myself. Yes, you did. <laughs> when replacing a head unit in a 2010 Tacoma, what harness do you recommend for keeping steering wheel controls, crux access, or something else? What would you do, Dean? Uh, I'm an access guy. I'm sorry, I'm not an access guy or a crux guy. We either are gonna use the PAC CP2, or if iData is compatible with that, I'll use the iData. The iData is gonna be the simplest steering wheel control, period, all right? They are the simple. You plug them into the laptop. Once the software is on there, you tell it what you want it to do. It gives you a wire for wire installation, and it's just super simple. I mean, as far as, there's no mystery, there's no buttons to press. There, there's no like hold volume up for five seconds and hope to God it works. There's no remapping of the steering wheel because you've mapped everything the way you want it. So if, if the iData will work for your car, go there. If not, my backup to that is gonna be the PAC CP2. Okay. Greetings from Chicago. Is it necessary to have a DSP if I have a 13 band EQ already on my CD player? Hmm, all okay. right. Well, that's a good question. So the difference between the EQ that's on your radio and a DSP is a lot, believe it or not. What your 13-band on your radio is is a 13-band global EQ, meaning when you adjust a band, it adjusts the output of all six channels that are attached to that radio, front, rear, sub, which is fine. You could still get great sound out of that. We've been doing it for years and years and years. However, if you want to get a more refined sound and you want to really get into the eh, nitty gritty of it, you can't do that with a radio because the, the output between the two doors is different. If you want to get a good representation of what I'm talking about, go back and watch Saturday's, this past Saturday's show where we have Jeff Smith on. About the halfway part, about half hour in, we dive into the Helix software and we show his EQ settings for both the passenger and the driver door and we start working your way through that. You can watch the whole thing if you want. It's really great stuff up to that point. But that's going to show you the outputs of how he set up his EQ in that amplifier in order to compensate so that the output, meaning what your ears are hearing, is identical. So the answer to the question is you still need a DSP but it's up to you on whether or not you want to do it. Uh, will I be able... I, I missed, sorry. Sorry, I hit the wrong button and screwed everything up. Hi, guys. Professional Car Audio. VA, or CA. CA. Uh, thanks, you guys. CD came today. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I knew that. That's cool. Uh, thanks for the info, Dean. Great stuff, man. No problem. No problem. What brand you recommend for a budget amp need a thousand watts RMS at one ohm? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess for stuff like that, we carry the Scar Audio stuff. But I mean, I feel like there's probably a dozen amplifiers like that that'll get you what you need. Um, you know, it just depends. Like. You said budget, so you need a thousand watts on a budget. That's 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 really you know. What's a budget? What budget? Yeah, I mean. And here's the question I ask when people say they need a budget thousand watt amplifier, a budget two thousand watt amplifier. Yeah. How are you gonna run that thousand watt amplifier on a budget? You, you know. 
It's it's gonna be tough, especially if like you got gauge. another. Yeah, you get you need zero gauge. You may need a you second need battery. A battery, yeah. Um, so it's just not a budget when you're talking about. Oh, whoa. I mean, a thousand watt nowadays isn't that big, but you know, it's like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is the non-premium already time aligned? Like you had mentioned for the 2020 Touring, I want to swap it for the car the 20 uh 20 the no the non the non-premium honda is not time aligned um there's there's nothing special to it it does have an eq that's on it but it's it, yeah it's not anything spectacular so uh what's a good cheap four channel amp for door speakers <laughs> that will do the job okay but like so, so Jason said the Rockford R2 1200.1. There you go. But still, there's not. So like, how much is that one? I don't know. It depends. You know, right. one guy's one guy's Rolls Royce is another guy's like uh, Kia. Um, <laughs> uh, so okay. you know, Kicker uh, yeah. carries the CSDX line. Mm -hmm. um, I know he's he probably said something. Ground Zero has some uh, their line of products at that. Yeah, uh, the 1000, the 1.1000. 1, yeah. Um, Rockford's gonna have their stuff. Everyone's gonna have their reasonably priced product. There's there's so much more to it than just buying a four channel amplifier. And I guess that's probably what probably probably probably. probably. I guess that's more what needs to be addressed when designing the system. You have to put some effort into it. If all you're trying to build is a mediocre system, the mediocre sound is what you're gonna end up with. You have to have a plan going into this. I get budget restraints. We all have them. Mm -hmm. Like the, life is a budget restraint. You know you know it's like. I want this. Well, you ain't got the money. Well, I guess I don't want that. You know, but you have to put a cohesive plan together and everything has to match. So, for mm -hmm. example, like this truck right here that we were showing you earlier, it has the audio control D5-1300 in it mm -hmm. on the Focal plug and play speakers. That is a lot of power for these speakers. It's a lot of power. The efficiency of these speakers, like this amplifier, he could have done Focal Flux, but it wasn't in his budget. But he has a huge, powerful amplifier that's driving these, like, exceptionally well. A lot of people might buy an expensive speaker that's not efficient. And then they'll get a small four-channel amplifier. And it's like, why don't these sound good? These sound amazing. He's got tons of power, zero dB, and very efficient speakers. Just gets up and dance real fast. Sounds wonderful. Um... It was built that way, though. It was built to do that. So uh, uh, you have to plan. Right. And like Jason say, okay, so that, that amplifier is 330. That, th with $300, you can get a really nice amplifier. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. 100 bucks will get you true 1,000 watts. Eh, probably. Um, Audio systems. Do you, do, do you ever do custom fabrication like Salmon or, car, or Cardio Fabric here? As far as, like, cutting wood, no. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm past that point in my career of uh, building that kind of stuff. I remember when I started working here, we were still we were still cutting we still, wood. Like made boxes and all that stuff, yeah, and then that was like ass. no, no more. Yeah, yeah. I was done. Um, no, that's not our business model. Uh, you know, every this isn't mine. Five Star, the retail store is is not mine. I don't own it. I just work here, like you know, like Fernando. I just um, work here. I just work here. <laughs> uh, and his business model is like such. And so we've pushed that as far as we can, meaning the things that we do that we custom build, like you know the little panels, the tweeter mounts, the speaker brackets, the amplifier panels. Yeah. Everything that gets done behind the scenes that no one ever sees and no one ever appreciates, we push as far right as here. we can. Yeah, right yeah. Here. yeah. <laughs> we push that as far as we can yeah. go yeah. Uh, in the confines of what we have to work with. That's and every why time we're gonna need like a really nice box. Uh, we have people that can do that for us. MTI and all these guys, April yeah. or so. You know, because so. it's all money. It's all time is money. So it, 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 it doesn't... And it's not a budget thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not a budget thing sometimes. Um, but no, so that's what we do. I mean, we have a full... We have every tool it takes to build everything we could ever possibly want to oh, build. Totally. Yeah. We just don't because we use it to build the stuff we need to build in order to do the type of installs that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and we use them every day. I mean, we have... Our, our shop is... It's... <laughs> It gets a workout every day. It just doesn't get a workout with sawdust. Uh, 
excess power um, we have a walking through the DSP the DMA 10 um, so just go check it out it's in one of those live shows on YouTube and yeah just search on there. YouTube mm -hmm. oh Ah, uh, Fernando, you need to listen to all oh, that song. Okay, yeah. make sure you listen to that. Well, we got to get through it. We got to get through this. I see. Um, audio Systems is in the house. The Fab <laughs> Kitchen. Yeah. yeah, we have more like the Fab Basement. Basement, huh? Yeah, although we got really sharp cabinets. I can't wait to finish that. That's right. Um, um, I see you do some custom Fab with that glow force. Yeah. We do all kinds of stuff. Like I said, our job is to push it as far as we can go without like we're not going to make a pillars no. but we're going to make everything it takes to mount the speaker into that thing you know that is that so um you know each each like for example like this this is a mount for this isn't mickey mouse this is a mount for a tweeter this was the prototype that eventually turned into the actual tweeter mount so we kept that these are you know here here's another piece of a prototype that we started to build and we, I didn't like the way it came out these are all pieces that are going to stack on top of one another so I keep all these just because they're you know but today uh you know like here is this is uh this was a a, a mock-up we did for the logo that goes into here I didn't like the way the Ford turned out and all this is is just a simple audio control panel cover and that goes into the car here you know on his dash see this ford looks a lot nicer so you know that's that's custom it's not glorious you know oh my god neon stuff or leds but it's custom you know the the amp board behind the seat is made specifically to go into this car we produce those here um so yeah it, it's just it's whatever you do so i mean if you come over to the to the, the wood the woodworking the plastic working area here i mean you have the four bearing spiral cut bit located here uh this is the round over bit that we use this this is a, a router just for rounding things over this is um this guy here the bearings uh jesus yeah yeah yep yeah, yep that does that thing you know cuts a little groove into it we have all the we have all the other router bits that we need i used to have a wall of routers over here but i took them home because we didn't use them that much so up here we just have the two routers that we actually need uh over there is another this crap is sitting on at the moment but over there is the router for the animal so that if we need to make a tapered mount we can of course we have all the different speaker rings that we don't use that often anymore because we have the laser here's some of the panels that the laser has made so like for example when we did the ground zero build this was the sample to mount so you know we, we designed this to go in this mimics the factory speaker and no one will ever see this but it looks really cool uh, and this was the this was for a, a nissan titan i think to mount back mount the speaker into the factory bracket there again no one will ever see this but um you know it's it's what it's what we do Like this one. What's that? Here. See, like, oh, yours. You make, you, <laughs> you make a Twitter. Just a mount Twitter. And how many pieces do you have to make and design just for you to able to put, put one. it in the factory location right there? Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, sure, it probably would have been easy just to, to mount something on here and remold this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Um, however, the nice thing is, is now that I've done this, I can do this as many times as I want. And I don't have to worry about, you know, every G35 or Nissan that uses the same hole pattern, which a lot of them are going to, mm -hmm. I can easily just put that on there. Um, the CNC will probably, if it, it'll be the end of the year because something else came up that's gonna, that's gonna kind of take that. We can't talk about right now. Um, but yeah, it'll be the end of the year, unfortunately, because yeah. Uh, making everything clean and beautiful is worth more than just making nice panels to hide mess underneath. <laughs> I can't say it better. And, uh, you know. I gotta go. Hang on. You gotta go? You gotta, gotta go. go to gotta go. Gotta go to the bathroom? No. no that's okay. Uh, it's almost time to pack up anyways. Pack up? Pack up. Pack up, pack on. 
But anyways, that's it, guys. We hope you enjoy this five minutes of five star. A little trip around the install bay. A little fun and excitement with the Ford F-150. Um, and, of course, showing off that new 51300 from Audio Control. Man, that thing is awesome. If you want to know more about that amplifier, make sure you head over to the playlist of Car Stereo Labs where we go in deep and tell you every new feature that it has. One of the things that's really cool about that amplifier is we talk about this all the time, by amping components. And one of the reasons why you end up having to go with that passive crossover is because most amplifiers don't have the ability to cross over high enough for your tweeter. So you have to put that cap on there or that cap coil if you want something that's better. Well, the nice thing about the D1300, it was designed a little bit smarter and it does have the ability to buy amp. So you can use channel one and two for your tweeters, channel three and four for your mid bass, and channel five for a subwoofer, along with using it conventionally as a front rear sub and or if you wanted to go crazy and make it a three channel, bridge it left, bridge it right. So lots of fun with that. Make sure you head over and check out that video. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later next time. Bye.